Hello there Capricorns. Welcome to your readings. Um, so I'm going to try to get through these readings because of time constraints on my end. Um, but you know, I, I don't want to shortchange the messages for you. So let's get into it. Um, it, it's it's crunch time and it is you know pretty much about hitting the ground running taking care of responsibilities and um, I don't know why but you know if last the, the last few weeks you've been doing a lot of traveling you've been doing a lot uh, there's a lot of movement I felt for you guys within the past two weeks where you are uh, traveling you're being wine and dine you're with somebody and you know someone is taking really good care of you footing all the bills and things like that so i remember that energy and i also remember as well that um you know now that it that it's almost like going back to reality going back to this situation where you know things are getting real and 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 the the pace is catching up it's all it's it's almost like if the past two weeks felt very surreal dreamlike and almost like a honeymoon phase um this is the the next two weeks will be crunch time okay so i want you to get your head in the game um put your thinking cap on because now we're back to reality okay so unfortunately that's just what i'm seeing here when I was shuffling out the spread for you, um, what I saw was, um, I see this, um, it's like a highway. So it's like a, um, a highway with the, the, the lanes and I see something moving forward. So it's almost like driving in your car and you're going through this straight highway. And then I feel like everything is enclosed in this circle and it's a really dark circle. So it feels like it's a night scene. And then there are um, little dots of stars twinkling within this circle this tunnel and you're moving forward okay so it's it's almost reminding me of the fact that you're moving on you're moving forward and things are um not all peaches and rosy and rainbows and lollipop at this point but you're getting closer and closer to the light at the end of the tunnel you're starting to see little uh, flickers of light kind of breaking through and I also feel like many of you are starting to get a lot more in touch with your intuition with your spirit guides or even it, it's almost like you're definitely being divinely guided in the right direction so the the circle the tunnel also indicates to me as well honing your focus being very 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 disciplined um tackling things one at a time, making sure that you deal with them thoroughly before you jump onto the next things. Um, you guys are much better when you're not multitasking. Okay. And then I also feel like, you know, this sense of divine protection, you're being led in the right path. So if you have been wondering, you know, why did my life meander? Why did, um, why did I have to take this rather than a straightforward route? Why did my life have to veer off in different directions? And then, you know, it's like all over the place. And uh, am I on the right track? I feel like your guys are telling you you're definitely on the right track. You had to take detours along the way, but you found your way back. And these detours are not in the greater scheme of things. They're not they're not setbacks. You had to, you know, for example, your path, let's say your path is straight. And then for whatever reason, it veered off into the right, right? And, and you experienced something, maybe some disappointment, some setbacks. Um, for some of you, I feel like financial loss. For others, I feel like a lot of family obligations that derailed you from your dreams. Uh, so for example, you wanted to go to school, but then family needs you, you had to work and you had to work full time to support the family, or you had to, you know, um, the, the needs of your parents called out to you and you had to pursue a specific course, um, or a, pursue something where there's a lot more money so that you could take care of them. So you had to let go of your dreams and your aspirations because of other uh, responsibilities. So I feel like your path kind of veered off to the right and, you're just like, I wonder what it would have been like if, you know, I, I went the other route. But I feel like what they're telling you is all roads converge, okay? Everything comes back together. You had to take this little detour because there was a very important lesson that you needed to learn. So whatever you felt have been setbacks or detours or, or you know, delays in your life, they needed to happen, 
because they needed you needed to to really know and understand what it is that you truly 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 want at the end of the day what is it that i really really want and i feel like you know you 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 don't let setbacks and 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 uh, obstacles detract you from your ultimate path and because of that all the roads will converge and you're once again uh, headed in the right direction okay so i feel like it's a very beautiful image but at the same time there is still a lot of work here um Delay gratification is what I'm sensing, and this is something you definitely can appreciate. You guys are quite disciplined, and you have forgo a lot of, uh, you've made a lot of uh, sacrifices, I feel, for other people, and you've made a lot of sacrifices. It's almost like self-discipline in order to achieve things, okay? So this is a, a concept that is not foreign to you. Um, what I feel here is um, needing to it's it's almost like um needing to form and reshape our mental processes needing to refine our communication needing to have a better process when it comes to learning so i'm seeing a lot of people want like i i feel a lot of people needing to have a better system needing to have a better process developing a better routine developing a better schedule for yourself because i feel like every minute counts and you you want to make sure that you're productive and efficient best that you that you can be and so you're letting um a lot of um frivolous activities things that might have been fun uh you're you're foregoing that because i feel like you want the time to devote to something I see, you know, this is the Wheel of Fortune, but it's uh, somebody almost like sharpening the knives, okay? It, it's almost like sharpening our communication skills, sharpening our mind, sharpening our problem-solving skills, and being able to hone in and sharpen our communication as well. And the sword energy, well, the, in this particular picture anyways, it deals heavily with um, the way we think, the way we solve problems, the way we analyze situations, and the ways in which we strategize in order to get ahead, okay? I see some people, uh, you and possibly a few other people, um, eyeing, eyeballing, or eyeing a... Um, a position in the work environment. I feel like some some vacancies will open up and it's a very desirable position. And um, honestly, you have the skills and the capabilities. You definitely should apply for it. But I see you kind of like this. Oh no, it's okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let the other people have it or I'll pass. And you do it in a very um, nonchalant type of a way. And um, I, I feel like there deep down is almost this sense of, I'm not sure if I apply for it, if I, I'm going to get it. I'm not sure if they're going to choose me over all the other people that are applying. So there's definitely self-esteem, self-confidence um, issues that I'm sensing. And I feel like, you know, you have the skills and the expertise. You definitely should go for it and don't shortchange yourself. But I see you're at a point where you're comfortable where you're at and you feel like, I can stay here, you know, for possibly another two years and make it work. And then, you know, after two years, I'll, I'll possibly apply for that higher up position. But I feel like, you know, opportunities come once in a lifetime. And so it's really important for us to grab opportunities as they come. Okay. But I, I, once again, I understand that you guys know, and you have a really clear, um, you have a really clear assessment of your capability. So whatever, for whatever reason, whatever your reason is for not applying for this or not doing this, I do feel a little bit is self-esteem, like probably 50% of it is self-esteem. And then 50% of it is like, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Okay. And so, um, recognizing that, recognizing that, are you not doing it out of fear or are you just uh, really comfortable where you're at and you don't feel like you want to um, put in your candidacy? Okay, so that's just something I want you to really look at for the next two weeks. You have a lot of love and support, a lot of love and support. And I feel like for some of you, this is a significant other, somebody who's working behind the scenes, um, 
um, I feel like a, a spiritual mentor, an emotional mentor, somebody who's telling you, you can do it. I believe in you, like your own personal cheerleader. It's almost like they're constantly hovering like, you know, on your over your shoulders or like that angel devil. But I feel like their their energy is very spiritual. OK, so this is somebody who really cares about you unconditionally and they're they're guiding you in the right direction. They're doing things behind the scenes to facilitate, to ease things for you. So, for example, if you have uh, a lot of work, um, they always have food ready. They always, you know, make sure that um, they take care of your needs. OK, if you are working odd hours, for example, they really try to accommodate you. They have might, you know, clean the house. They might do a lot of behind the scenes things to make life easier for you. And I also feel very, very, very strong um, spiritual protection. Somebody that has passed on, a male figure, okay? Um, possibly from the father side of the family, somebody that's kind of like um, watching over your shoulders. I see this strong guardian angel aspect. Guarding over your shoulder, watching over your shoulders, helping you avoid... Um, car accidents be very careful when you're driving um, make sure you don't speed make sure you know um, please do just you know don't um, don't go for unnecessary joy rides and try a little bit more to you know just um, you guys are really cautious it's not you I'm worried about I feel like it's more other people other drivers other people on the road so whatever you do just um, try your best to you know um, minimize the time that you're actually on the road okay sorry about that i'm trying to uh, my phone just came on um <clears throat> so you have some strong guardian protection coming through for the next two weeks and whenever that comes through i feel like it's such a blessing but at the same time i feel like there are warning signs uh, regarding some some specific aspect in your life um there was a situation in the past where we bit off more than we could chew and uh, we don't want a repeat of that. That's what I'm feeling here. Okay, I have here the Ace of Swords. And I have here the Ten of Wands. Overestimating or underestimating how difficult something would be, how time consuming, how... Um, it, I, I feel like you guys underestimated the, the difficulty level of something. And... Um, you know that you had to do it. You know that you had to take care of it, but you didn't anticipate that it was going to be so um, time consuming, so difficult. So you didn't think it was going to be so, um, so draining. OK, for some of you, this is like having children, um, having to take care of them and then realizing that it's, it's, it's more than you could handle. Uh, you might need some assistance. You might need, you know, child care. You might need um, a babysitter. You might need a nanny. You might need some some type of a um, outside help regarding the situation. For others of you, this is something regarding your acquisition of knowledge. And I feel like it might be school. It might be the workload. It might be training. It might be um, communicating or teaching or, or doing something, mentoring another person. It was very, very time consuming. And it was a situation where I feel like, you know, it didn't, the, the outcome didn't come out the way that you wanted. You're learning from past experiences and you are not going to put yourself in this situation. So you're doing everything within your power to not let this repeat. Okay. So I feel it's almost like we don't sit there and sulk over things and the way that we feel they should be. You guys pick yourselves up of your own bootstraps. You dust yourself off and you try again with the knowledge from the previous time that you have failed. So I feel like there is a very empowering energy here about, you know, um, learning from past mistakes. OK, not underestimating something, but at the same time, not letting fear get the best of you. OK, but I feel like whatever the situation has been, um, I, I see something that was, you know, the past 10 months or the past five months. It, it, it just um, it felt to me to be very difficult and you didn't think it was going to be that hard. And I also feel like it did dampen your self-esteem a little bit. But now you're just like, 
wait a minute, you know, I've learned from it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to blame anybody but myself, or, you know, I'm not going to blame uh, other people or circumstances. I'm going to take it with great strides. So I feel like you're getting yourself a lot more centered and you're looking at the situation like it's a great learning experience. I'm glad it happened regardless. Now I can, you know, um, work on improving my skills, improving my processes so that this situation doesn't happen again. For some of you, I feel like it's going to school and possibly um, doing everything that you can in order to ace an exam and feeling like you didn't do, like you could have done more. Okay, don't beat yourself up over it. I feel like it was a very difficult process. Ten of Wands, it was unexpected as well. OK, it's almost like you 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 knew that you had like, for example, five things that you had to take care of. And you're like, oh, OK, uh, it's going to be hard, but then, you know, I'm going to do it. So then you anticipate these five things. But then along the way, other responsibilities get thrown on top of these five things. And before you know it, it became difficult, like too much. Um, we're moving into a new year. You have a different perspective. And I also feel like you're doing things to enhance your processes. You're doing things to enhance your knowledge base. You're doing things in a more systematic manner so that you can get everything done. And it's going to be great. Okay. Finances looks very, very good. Um, once again, there's that opportunity that's available. If you choose to go for it, I see you're contemplating this choice. There's another person in your miss in the work environment, possibly. Um, the person seems to me to be a little bit, um, more you feel like they're more suitable for that role and you feel i think they're going to apply for it too and you feel like they're going to get that role so you don't want to be you know uh, competing against them is what i'm sensing and so you're kind of mulling this over and i feel that you should go for it anyways because you know it's, it's not personal um may the best winner you know may the may the best person may the best candidate win and i feel like don't um, just just depersonalize it. Don't um, make it into a thing. Don't make it awkward. Don't make it seem like a competition because I feel like the other person is eyeing you as their their as their competitor as well. So I see this back and forth between like should I apply for it? I might be up against this person. Things like that. Okay. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to focus on here. Um. You're trying to be very diplomatic to avert some type of a conflict. And I feel like somebody is telling you something that you already know about yourself that you don't really want to admit. I'm sorry for the fireworks in the background. I'm doing this on New Year's Eve, okay? So I hope you can still hear me over the noise. Um, I feel like there are some things that, you know, we already know. We don't need somebody to bring it up. And um, so I, I see a little bit of conflict avoidance here. And I also feel um, it's almost like, you know, uh, let bygones be bygones. Let's not dwell on and, and bring up this topic every single time. And that's what I'm, I'm sensing here. And I feel like for some of you, um, if you are in a relationship, I see there's somebody who might be soliciting you from outside the relationship. What I have here is the lovers. And I see you turning down this opportunity for temptation, turning down that person, turning down the offer. Four of Cups once again. Okay. And it's, it's almost like, no, I, I've got a really good relationship partner who really loves me, who emotionally fulfills me, who takes care of me, who's a, a great caretaker to our children. So I have a lot to lose. And I don't want to, you know, get into a pattern where I'm making decisions that are not good for, for, for me personally, but also for the people that I love. So I feel like you're turning down offers. If you're in a relationship, you're like, I'm good. I, I have somebody that I love. I have somebody that I really care about. And for some of you, you could be dealing here with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. This could be the person that you're turning down, or this could be your relationship partner where you feel like, you know, out of the, the dignity and the respect and the love that I have for this person, I'm not going to stray. I'm going to do right by them. So I feel there's a lot of love and support coming through with relationship partners. 
And I feel like you're trying to create the space where you focus on yourself and you work on yourself and you take care of your responsibilities. But you're doing it w with a sense of like, I'm mature now. This is what I need to do. It's not like the sense of obligation. I feel like you're realizing this is important to me. This is what I need to do. It could be school. It could be work. It could be relationships. And then you're also creating the space. This, this, um, it's almost like the sanctity of marriage or the sanctity of relationship where you're honoring your commitment to, you know, whoever it is that you're involved with. And you're not letting anybody or anything interfere with these two very sacred things in your life. Okay. I hope the reading is helpful. I feel like we're turning over a new leaf. I see a lot of changes that have happened for you guys. And I feel like last year needed to happen. I know it was very, very painful. Last year, meaning 2018, okay? Um, you guys have been through some hard things. But you're coming out clean on the other side. And now we know what we need to really focus on, what we need to set our intentions for, for 2019, okay? I wish you all the best, Capricorns. Um, you guys are one of my favorite signs. And um, I don't know why I keep running into you guys, but you guys are also my best teachers, okay? So I really honor and respect you guys, especially for the way, in the gentle way in which you deal with people. You're, um, you care about people, but it's also in a very detached manner. And it's also in a very understanding, uh, in a very soulful manner. And you want everyone to thrive and, and to do well. Okay. Um, and you're so patient as well. I wish you all the best. Please take care of yourself. Focus on those two sacred things that you hold dear to your heart and, you know, that's that's what needs to be the focal point for this month at least, okay?